Well, I guess the most important job of the, the next lieutenant governor is to do the job as it's defined. Um, the Constitution and the statutory laws governing uh, the office of lieutenant governor are pretty specific. It doesn't give you a whole lot of latitude. There are roles related to the fire commissioner, to local government, to military bases, to emergency management. Uh, and then one of the ones that I'm pretty passionate about is, is corrections. Uh, corrections reform is something that uh, has finally, I think, bridged the bipartisan divide. And Republicans and Democrats are beginning to talk about it in a serious way as an answer, perhaps, to the workforce crisis. We don't have enough workers, and we're warehousing people. And when you warehouse people and don't give the bright light at the end of the tunnel to say uh, there is hope for you, the ripple effect on education, on the disintegration of communities, all of it can be traced back to that hopelessness. So um, the, the main job that I think I can do as lieutenant governor is to bring the office, the job back into the roles that it was defined by law. And they're very limited. They're very specific. And there really are no drama uh, roles, uh, roles that require the lieutenant governor to be the number two, uh, to stay out of the headlines as much as possible and to be a workhorse. But perhaps the most significant job of the lieutenant governor is the one that in this political moment could be most helpful. Uh, and that is maintaining civil uh, discourse and decorum uh, in the state Senate. We, we could be a model. The Pennsylvania Senate could be a model uh, to legislatures across the country for how government could actually work between a, in a divided age between Republicans and Democrats. Uh, I don't think it would be too much of a leap to say that within four years, we could transform the way people view and trust their institutions. So the top priority of any lieutenant governor has to be passing the governor's agenda. And that's a significant departure, I think, from what we've seen uh, perhaps in the last four years, which um, the lieutenant governor has taken on a more activist role. His right, his choice, uh, every lieutenant governor can kind of define how they want to do the job. I want to bring it back to perhaps the late 70s and early 80s, that relationship between Dick Thornburg and Bill Scranton. Uh, you saw a lot happen, big consequential things happen, like Three Mile Island, you know, which happened within 60 days of the Thornburg-Scranton administration coming online. And you needed a no-drama, no-nonsense, straightforward lieutenant governor to communicate to the general public uh, the steps, the procedures, everything's going to be okay to bring calm to chaos. What we have in this social media environment right now, uh, where every five seconds there seems to be a new crisis, what we have in that moment is an opportunity for people like the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania uh, to begin to bring people back to what is really important, which is the functions of government. Number one job, number one priority if I'm elected uh, lieutenant governor, is to pass a legislative agenda. When the lieutenant governor's office functions, it functions as the switchboard between the House leaders, the Senate leadership, and the administration. That means you play a subordinate, almost subservient role. You don't have any agenda but to make the governor look good. The Pennsylvania Senate and the House are governed by a book. It's called Mason's Manual, and it's a collection of years and years of best practices, essentially, and rules that govern the way that debate happens. Uh, it's partially the brilliance of the founders in that the founders saw, I guess, the flawed nature of human beings. Like, we're all a mess. So when we come to a particular job that's as potentially as tense as the role of representing your constituents. And you bring all these ideas to this raucous legislative set of re uh, legislative bodies. The rules are so important. So the lieutenant governor really embodies the role of referee. And if you can, using that Mason's manual, which by the way, contains beautiful passages from someone named Thomas Jefferson, who knew how to get his colleagues to work and cooperate uh, against sometimes uh, competing interests. Um, that book, the way that you conduct business in the Senate, the way that you model decency, civility, and behavior, and good behavior, I think would be tremendously important. 